Today I'm going to show you how to change the charging port on a Galaxy J3 Emerge. Uh, this charging port is destroyed, so if you look closely, you can see how bad of a shape it is. But this port is soldered on, so we got to solder a new one, and we're going to go through that full process on this phone. Now keep in mind, this process is the same or very similar for a lot of Android phones. For example, this phone has actually has a few different names, J3 Emerge, J3 Eclipse, J3... Prime, uh, Express Prime, Galaxy Amp Prime, but the, the main thing you should take away from this is the fundamental process of desoldering a charging port and putting one back on. It's a really easy repair, but uh, it does require you to have the proper tools and skills and experience to do this successfully, because there are things that can go wrong in this process. So make sure you guys stick around for the full video. And if you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure you guys are smashing the like button. Also, if you wanna support the channel, I have cool shirts like this that are repair shop related. So check those out in the link down below. And of course, we do offer mail-in service for this type of repair. So check out our website, which is linked down below as well. So let's go ahead and get started with this repair. All right, so one of the things about this specific uh, model is you can see how it's the main board and then a skinny little leg and then to this charging port. And one tricky part about this is how do you do it with where you can just work on the charging port without possibly breaking this board. Uh, so one trick you can do is if you have this amazing board holder, the tool jig, it's really nice because it's very flexible. Um, you can adjust the little legs. So I will link it down below. But uh, I found if I set it up this way, like these little legs, slide them in, and then I can put the board like this, and then I could tighten it like that. Then I have the board right here. So let me put a close up look. So one goes through that hole. One is grabbing the board. This one's like basically it's pinching here and the board, the charging port board is here. So no matter what, we're not gonna push down and break it. If you had any other board holder, it might be hanging off the lip and then you could possibly break it if you, uh, you know, accidentally bump into it. Uh, one thing is this board holder also has a little rubber uh, cover over the handle. I'm gonna leave it on for now, but if I do see it's burning or anything, then you could actually slide this off. So let's go under the scope. Now real quick, let's do a visual inspection of what we're dealing with here. Now the port itself is destroyed as you saw in the intro, but uh, just good. it's a good idea to take a look at the landscape of what you're gonna be working on. So you can see the pins that are there. You can see the anchors for the port, uh, and then you can see the surrounding components. One of the many things that can go wrong is that you can bump this chip, you know, bump these capacitors or short them together, get solder on them, you know, bump all kinds of stuff. Also on the back side, now one of the most common failures that happens is either, um, you know, you bump a component here or you damage the microphone. A lot of these Android phones have a microphone right next to the port because that's where your mouth goes when you're on a phone call, is right at the bottom of the phone. So there's gonna be a microphone. So this is the top of the microphone, and if you look directly on the other side, there's a little hole here. So that's where the sound comes in, into the microphone, and then it connects to this, and then it goes to the rest of the board. So you gotta be real careful with that component, because if you, if you mess with this, you get flux in there, or you bump it, then you have to replace it so that the microphone works. Also, it's good to look at the port itself. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six anchors. These are basically the pins that are grabbing on for structural integrity. So you can see four on the top side, but on the other side, there's more. And then another important thing is for your port. Now for this specific repair, I will link to this port, but there are other, every model might be different. So that's one of the things that sucks about this is that you might have to stock a million different types of ports, but they're actually also pretty cheap, so it won't be a big deal. The key is to make sure it matches, that the anchors line up, right, they line up, and then the pins are the same, and they line up. So you can see the pins uh, match up, you know, thickness and number of pins and everything. You know, there are some ports that look identical, but when you look closely, the pins don't line up or the anchors don't line up. And a lot of times you can also modify an existing port to fit 
the one you're working on in case you can't find it or you know you're out of stock and you want to get this repair done on the spot so one of the key steps to soldering is having flux now i'm using uh, amtech flux which i will link down below as well i'm going to apply it to the port to get this out so there's a few different techniques for all this but uh, this is a technique i use in most cases you could technically hot swap uh, although that does require you to put your hot air station underneath so what we're going to do with the traditional method at least what i call traditional uh, we're going to pre-tin the anchors now the solder i'm adding is going to be lower melt than the factory solder so it will allow the port to come off easier so like that you can also flip it over and do it on the other underside so let me do that as, right now as well and technically you could do this on your bench although i do like it suspended because it does allow the thermal uh, mass to be lower so the heat transferred better which means it'll come off easier so again because if you have it on the bench then the bench is absorbing some of that heat if you have it like suspended in midair then it uh, comes off a little easier so um, you know with enough time and practice you'll kind of learn what works best for you but there's some you know some techniques work better than others. So there you go, I got those pins tinned. Also, you know, no flux made it, at least there's a little bit here, but, but nothing went inside. Then, um, if you want to do the inner pins as well. Now this might be a little trickier because it's a really tight spot and you should have a proper iron to be able to get in here to add solder to these pins. For example, this thick one here is gonna require a lot more heat to flow because it's probably ground. So I gotta like press the thick part of my iron. See this one flows real easy. The little ones, you can see how the solder melts right away. This one does not. And if you have a crappy iron, you know, like a Radio Shack iron, which you find at a yard sale, you're gonna, you're gonna have a hard time doing any of this. All right, so pretty much I pre-tinned everything. Uh, also, we could also pre-tin the charging port, uh, just like my hot swap video on HDMI. Uh, basically what this does is it adds solder to these pins. So when we go to install it, it'll have something to flow onto the pads on the board. So let's pin these. And have some solder on your iron. Now only do this on the pins not the anchors and also having little spikes. Let me zoom in closer so you can see what I mean. The bigger the spike, the more it'll grab. There you go. Now I did uh, accidentally get some solder here on the anchor. So I just kind of swiped it away. All right, so the port is basically prepped as well. This is what the other side looks like. You can see, hopefully you can see the little spikes. All right, so now let's try uh, the ports. All right, so let me add flux to at least this part. Let me start off with 360 Celsius and 40% on my hot air station. And essentially, remember the mic is down here. The microphone's right here. So you wanna 
stay, keep your flux away from that. Also, I'm gonna keep the charging port, the new one close by, so you can see it. Hopefully here in the frame. Right, I can see all everything is melting. So I'm just kind of heating the port itself. I'm grabbing it with my tweezers so I could wiggle it out. There it goes, it's coming off. Now I'm gonna get the new port. Let me put it, uh, let me put it here nearby. Now, those pads don't look as clean, so let me flux this a little bit. So this is what I'm gonna do. Kind of like hot swap, but in reverse. Well, from the top, I'm gonna melt the anchors and try to drop in the port. Let's see if this works. Honestly, I haven't done this in a while, so please don't judge. All right, I kind of got in. Right, there it goes, pushing it down. And it's on. All right, let's rotate this this way. I'm just gonna reflow it just to ensure we got good solder joints now that we have more flux. We get nice. Nice uh, solder joints here. But look at that. You can see all the connections are there because I pre tinned the port. Also, we are really close with the flux there. Also, you notice all the components nearby did not blow away. I didn't have to put any cap on. Uh, I just heated it and kind of focused my hot air in the right direction which is towards the port, away from everything else. All right, so now let's get it out of this board holder. And do a better visual inspection. All right, so everything looks soldered on. One test you can do is you get a blade and you poke the pins. Make sure they don't wiggle to the sides. And you're good. Now let's check the bottom side. Look at that. You can see the flux almost got to the mic, but it didn't. So we're safe. The mic should be working. And now there's a lot of flux down here. So let's clean it up with some ISO and a cotton swab. If your flux is too hard, you could also um, heat it up a little bit and then try cleaning it again. It's just, that will soften the flux itself and basically uh, make it easier to clean. But make sure you guys clean. I've seen a lot of people who are starting new and they don't clean. They just, they just dump a bunch of flux on the board do all this soldering and then just leave it. Uh, that's not a good look. All right, so now let's look inside the port. Make sure this is uh, not burned inside. Because one thing is these ports are plastic inside. So let me see. Let me 
you can see the port is fully intact it's not scorched the connector is all solid also you can see the port is sitting flat it's like flush with the pcb the metal bottom is all flush like in here the black um, backing or whatever the back end of the port is you know all one piece doesn't look burned so yeah this looks like it's uh, good to go all right so just one quick little test is a usb meter what we're going to do is plug in this micro usb cable just to see if we get any readings all right we get some current draw now because there's no battery it's not going to charge properly but you can see we're getting some current draw so that's a good sign if we just stayed if we plug something in and just stay it at zeros, that means the pins aren't soldered on. Essentially, there's no connection between the meter and the circuit. So, I mean, that could also be a bad cable or whatever, and that's where you would uh, come in to troubleshoot. So now, let's, uh, let me put the board into the housing so we can do a little more testing. All right, so now I have a battery in, and even without a screen, I just wanna see what the meter does. All right, so now we're gonna get higher readings. So 0.4 something. So that's uh, 0.41 amps, which is 400, 415 milliamps. And it is a steady number. Now a good charging current should be more like one amp. Some of these older Androids would be maybe 0.97 or something like that, but it's kind of half. But that could be the battery itself if it's too low. It'll do that for a little bit and then jump up higher. So let me plug in a screen and see if we get a charging logo. All right, so I have a screen in now and what do we get? Charging logo. But uh, let's see what happens. We need to see the like 1%, 2%, you know, the actual battery percentage to see if it's actually working. Now, like I said, if the battery is too low, basically this won't charge a full capability for this model. Uh, we basically have to wait until it gets above a th certain threshold. And if you want to get a little technical, let's check out how to measure that battery. So on the battery itself, you'll see a positive and negative symbol, at least for this style of battery. Uh, the older Samsung phones, Android phones with the, pretty much all batteries will have a positive and negative. Otherwise you kind of have to figure it out. But basically with that, you can see how it's, how it corresponds to the first pin from the right and then the third pin. So on your multimeter, you set it into volts DC mode and then you just probe those two pins. So negative goes to black, red goes to uh, positive. So we have 3.2 volt battery. These batteries should operate between 3.6 to 4.2 and that is 3.6 being like 0%, 4.2 being 100%. So that's how the threshold works. So this is below 0% battery. So that's why we're stuck at the low battery symbol. So we basically have to charge it up for a little bit more and then just wait to see what happens. All right, so it looks like it has charged up enough to show us a battery percentage. So this is pretty much fixed. As you can see, we're now getting some life. Also the current draw on the USB meter has gone up to 0.77, which is about decent for an older Android phone that uses micro USB. You know, some customers love their old phones and if they need them repaired, I'm not gonna say no. So if you guys need this type of repair, send me a message. I will link it down below. We offer mail-in service, also local customers here in Las Vegas. Uh, you can check out our Google Maps. We have 93 five-star reviews with tons of praise of our process. It's very smooth mail-in. Uh, repair process so if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you guys are smashing the like button sharing this video with all your friends uh, get one of yourself one of these t-shirts if you're a repair technician uh, we have a bunch of different designs you guys should check it out also don't forget we have a repair wiki this is a crowdsource um, website with a bunch of solutions for a bunch of repairs so iphones ipads macbooks game consoles all that good stuff we're constantly updating it, so check that out. Also, we have the Locals community, and I have a new um, membership on YouTube as well, so join that. I will post exclusive content on there as well. So you guys check all that out. Appreciate all you guys who stuck around here to the end. I'll post another charging port video down below. 
I'll see you guys in the next one.